Good morning, y'all. Just wanna um talk about this dream I had this morning, early this morning. It's kind of like scary, you know. Um, this dream had to, I do believe it had to do with probably the tribulation, um, but it was a trip, y'all. Anyway, I'm just gonna kind of highlight the the part of the of the dream that I felt that was important. Okay, so in this dream, I was. Uh, cause, cause I'm a veteran, disabled veteran, and um, so I was in this dream. I was going to the VA, I guess to go, you know, refill like my prescription meds, right? And while I was going there, I noticed um, it's almost like you walk into the hospital, but then I was somehow outside, and like in a different, you know, street, but in the same hospital. And as you keep going, you, you know, I found that I was kind of going underground, which i never been. I mean, I don't think our VA hospital has an underground. If they do, I don't know. But anyway, that's not the point. Um, I was going underground, and in this underground, in this place where I was, I can't remember exactly what was going on there. But all of a sudden, I noticed, it's almost like I had this knowing, right, that a tsunami is coming where we were. And the tsunami is coming where we were. And the crazy part is I just knew it's coming. And no one that's there is going to survive. Like nobody. Everyone is going to drown. I just had that knowing that I had to get out of there or I'm going to drown with everyone else. So I remember, um, you know, I said, man, I think, this, I think there's going to be a storm coming. There's a, there's, a tsunami coming. there's a tsunami coming. So, of course, you know, people kind of started, you know, scrambling and stuff, you know, ru running. And so I started running. It's almost like a stampede-ish, you know. It's almost like a stampede-ish, you know, where I ran and get towards the edge of the wall. But this edge of the wall, is it's like there's no door. There's no door. And then what looks like, um, you know, like during storms, how people have those sandbags, you know, lined up. That's what it looks like that's in front of us, like stacked up, okay. But it wasn't sandbags, though. Um, now here's the weird part about this dream. <laughs> the, the bag itself looks like it's made out of like, um, some kind of material, but it has polka dots of like white and different shades of blue. Okay. Like literally. So when you actually grab it, it's falling off the bag, you know, but it is, it, it's not like uh, it falls off and then the bag is clear. It's like part of the bag, you know what I'm saying? But it's built up like that. So anyway, so I was grabbing onto it and it kept falling off. I'm like, man. Ah. So at that point, I was like, Lord, please, please get me out of here. Because I cannot be down here. I cannot die down here with, with all these people. I'm like, please get me out of here. So while I was saying that, um, sure enough, I started climbing, you know, towards those bags, which, which for some reason it was holding my weight. You know, I, I, I'm a pretty, you know, muscular, heavy guy too, you know, so, but it was holding my waist. I was climbing, you know, and there's other people c coming up behind me trying to climb up too. And I re I remember um, when I got towards the, like the, towards the top part of it, I started kind of pulling the bag away. And, I, and I, as I'm pulling the bag away, you know, trying to see if there's a way out. Well, I had this knowing just to keep going. So I moved all the bags in front of me, and there's, a, there's another guy, I don't know who that person was, on the left of me that was moving the bags also. And all of a sudden, what looks, what normally would be a wall there became like a cardboard paper, like a cardboard paper. So I just punched right straight through, and I ripped it open. I'm like, oh, snap. So there's an exit. So I crawled right through there, out of there. And literally, there were two Bentleys, gold Bentleys, parked as if they were waiting for us, like waiting. I've never been in a Bentley before. Um, I know I, I know what it looks like, but I've never been in one, you know. But these two gold Bentleys was parked right there waiting. And sure enough, um, I crawled out of there and I ran and I jumped into the driver's side, you know. And then there's this other person, I don't know who that person was, jumped on the passenger side. This other guy jumped in the passenger side. 
And then the other Bentley, I see another person go in that one, and the second person jump in the side, side. And then we drove up real fast, okay? This was like at nighttime, it seemed like. Okay, we drove up real fast, and all of a sudden, I'm back in the hospital again. But this time, I'm upstairs. You know how when, you know, like troll at the receptionist area where you check out? Well, there was a string attached to me and this person. And I remember walking towards the receptionist. I'm mean, everyone was acting like like nothing was happening, you know, which is gonna be bizarre because to me, I'm like, dude, this tsunami is about to devour this whole place, and everyone is like all calm and like re relaxed, like as if nothing is happening. I'm like, oh my goodness. So I told the lady, I said, okay, um, do I, do do I need to check out here? And she was like, oh, you already checked out. Just go ahead. Just just go ahead. And she waved me bye. And then I said, oh, moving. And then I remember. I don't know who that person was again attached to me in this string, this blue string of a rope. And we started walking and we walked literally right out of the hospital and I woke up. Now, just to be clear, this dream, as even though, I mean, I, again, I'm just telling you guys the, like the important part of the dream because this other part that just didn't really make any sense, you know, that has nothing to do with what I'm telling you now. But this particular part where I felt I was important, I need to share this one. Let me tell you guys something. It was terrifying because I knew the tsunami was coming. And I knew that we all going to drown to death because you can't just swim. You are underground. So when the water comes, it's going to pretty much drown everyone that's, that's there. Okay, so that fear was so terrifying that even the people... They were screaming, like trying to, it was almost like a stampede. People stepping on each other, trying to get to that, you know, uh, top. Except for you're climbing, but there's no way out. But for some reason, a way out was made for me and this other person and the other person to the left. And we were able to get out. And there was literally just two cars waiting, two Bentleys, gold Bentleys. I remember that. Gold Bentleys, you know, coupe. That's exactly what it is. Gold Bentley coupes. And they were waiting for us. And then why when we, we jumped in there, we took off, you know. But I just had a feeling that this dream is significant because there's two things I realized. Okay, one, the coming tribulation is going to be terrifying. When people acting like, you know, it's no big deal, you know, I'm not scared, whatever. Let me tell you something. I'm, I'm a 6'2", you know, you know, you know, big guy, okay. So I was terrified out of my mind, okay. Because there's nothing you can do. Literally, nothing. When you're trapped, you are trapped. Literally. That fear of knowing you're going to drown to death and there's nothing you can do to save yourself. That was terrifying. But one thing that was great is while I was praying and asking God, please, please, please get me out of here. God literally turned that wall into cardboard paper. And, it, and I, I, I literally punched right straight through, right before my very eyes, I punched right straight through, and it was like a whole different street. And I was able to crawl, you know, through that, and the other, I guess, three people, because there's me, there's the other person that jumped in my car, and then there's other two, and I could see the other people trying to crawl out, to say, wait for us, wait for us. I'm like, uh, no. So we, we, we took off, we were like, we gotta go, let's go. So we took off and just left after that, you know? But anyway, that was one part of that. It's going to be terrifying for those who are here. The second part of that where I felt that is important is people, it's going to be like any any normal day when the tribulation comes, okay? Just like any normal day, people are just literally nonchalant of what's going on, just, you know, handling everyday business, you know, as usual, without expecting anything to come, okay? And suddenly, it will happen without warning, Without warning, people are not going to be ready. So I just felt like this dream is important because, again, we need to start warning people, you know, turn to Jesus while you still have the opportunity to do so, you know, because when the rapture happens and that tribulation begins, I'm sorry, but, um, you know, you know, all, all this, I don't care, you know, you know, my best life now will become your worst nightmare now. OK, so anyway, just want to say um, I love you guys. But as always, keep sharing the truth. Remind people that it's by grace, true faith, in Christ alone. Okay? By grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone.
Okay, Ephesians 2, 8, 9 is very simple. For by grace we are saved through faith, not of ourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. We need to be warning people to accept the free gift of salvation that Jesus has paid and purchased for us. Okay? Instead of people sitting here acting as if, you know, God hasn't done anything for us. Let us remember something. What God is trying to prevent and protect us from, you have no idea. Like your mind can't even begin to fathom that. Warn people, okay? If you love your loved ones, warn them. If they don't want to listen, that's on them. But at least make the attempt to warn people if you, you know, at least claim to love them. If you have a platform, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, whatever, warn people. It is important that people give their lives to Christ because I do feel that, you know, <laughs> we're going to be out of here soon. That's what I feel, you know, and I don't know when, but I just sense it. Anyway, love you guys um, and continue to, you know, stand with the gospel of grace, okay? Not of works, okay? Works can save you. There's nothing you can do to save yourself, okay? I don't care how many how many people. You know, homeless people you you you, you feed, that's not gonna save you, okay? The only requirement for salvation is believe and trust in Jesus Christ. Believe in him. The thief on the cross, all he did was believe in him, okay? Jesus, Jesus didn't tell him, Oh yeah, well, 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 I'm glad you believed in me, but also you also have to, you know, get off this you know cross and get baptized too. You know, oh better yet. You got to speak in tongues, man. If you can't speak in tongues, you ain't coming where I'm coming. I didn't hear Jesus say none of that. Okay? It's very simple. Believe in Jesus Christ. Trust him. And you will be saved. Believe in him. The work of, of God is that you believe in the one whom he has sent, which is his son, Jesus Christ. Okay? Jesus is the son of God. He's also God in the flesh. He is the second person in the, of, of, of the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. If you don't believe that, that's your problem, not mine. Anyway, time is running out, guys. Just want to share this dream. Take care. Bye.